deep underneath the Earth's surface lies the hollow Earth and the city of Gutterfall, which is inhabited by reptilic beings, you being one of those six beings, uh, a mercenary controlled by an evil demon named Perditus. His, he is a specific bounty hunter, and he's always looking for unique bounties, and you are one of his many underlings. Uh, one unique bounty has been sought after. It is called the Supremacy. Uh, it's an amulet that is controlled by this being, and you need to gather that and bring it to your overlord. And if you can do so, so you will be freed from the control of your master. However, if you're not able to do that, your soul will be bound to him in life and in death. In the game Gutterfall Bounties, you're going to be playing with up to six players moving around the city of Gutterfall, looking for the supremacy with the necklace. Gather that bounty and bring it back in time to rescue your soul. You'll be utilizing a deck and deck building as you move around the board performing actions and collecting various armor and equipment in order to get that that precious amulet. If you can do so, you win. However, if not, your soul will be stuck with the evil demon overlord, and you'll be forced to work bounties for the rest of your miserable existence. Let's take a look down below, show what the game comes with, how it plays, and then we'll come up for my review of the game Gutterfall Bounties, currently on Kickstarter, down below. Welcome to the game Gutterfall Bounties, and I've currently set it up for three players, but it does play up to six players if you so choose. Go ahead and set out the board for the game, and go ahead and give every single player a player board and character. For instance, here is Gold Tooth. You're also going to give every single player currency. You'll give them five of these hundred markers here, and of course, a player token or a player standee, and place it in the prodigious office here, right in the middle of the board. You're also going to give every single player a player deck of cards. So it'll come with personal security, a moto taxi, restock, firefights, and devil's gambits, uh, planned ambush, and wiretap. Go ahead and place this over here and make sure that you shuffle the deck well. And then everybody is going to have all of those things. You're also going to go ahead and take these guys out here. These are the supremacies. There's six different ones. You you will go ahead and shuffle them and choose one of them at random and place it under the board. That will be the supremacy with the amulet. That's the one that you're looking for throughout this entire game. Go ahead and take the fake one, this one here, which is basically a non, it's basically a nothing card. Put it in this deck here and shuffle these cards up and deal them out to all the players. If it's an odd number of players, place the extras somewhere in the hidden in the board, not next to this one here. You'll be using uh, those to buy and to sell them in the arms dealer area here, or the secret market, I should say. Go ahead and take these and distribute them out. So in this case, there's gonna be two for each of the players here and you can look at these so for instance if i was playing as harlow i could see okay i have jakarta and i have the executive and i also have the blank one so i would be able to mark off on my player board or player little area here that i have jakarta here which means that he it, the bad guy is definitely not this one the bounty we're looking for is not this one and throughout the game i'll be marking the rest of these off in hopes to find the one that is actually the real one then go ahead and take the hit cards. You'll take them all, you'll shuffle them up. Most hit cards are going to be these guys here that you're going to fight throughout the game. However, in certain decks here, you're going to find the supremacies. These are the ones, this guy here, that you're going to need to defeat if you think they are the one with the necklace. And if you defeat them and they are, you win. If they are not, you lose. Make sure that you shuffle them all up and deal them out randomly and evenly between these six different areas. Deep slums, deck goes here. Docks, deck goes here. Industrial zone, deck goes here. And so on for these guys as well. Take the die, set them aside somewhere nicely. And of course, all the currency and tokens so that people can reach them. And then set up your base buying cards and your specific items over here. These guys are going to be in stacks of the 100 currency, the uh, 200 cur 300 currencies, and the 500 currencies and if you want to make it even easier make sure you separate them by color as well you'll be buying these guys based on the prices up on the top left so making sure that you separate them makes it easier and then of course on the opposite side of the board in the arms dealer area you'll be buying these things tier one and tier two weapons and armor go ahead and put them somewhere near the board so that they're within reach of all players finally take all the extra wiretap cards and place them at the top of the deck because this is where you're going to be buying car or buying from the secret market area individually they are going to be able to let you find the uh, supremacy easier and then begin the game. Simply go ahead and take one of the die and roll it. And whatever uh, indicator pops up, if it's one of these guys here, they'll go first. In this case, no player goes first. But in this case here, it's the bullet. Gold tooth would go first. And to begin the game, you're simply going to go ahead and draw three cards from your deck. After you draw three cards, you can move. You can normally just move one space. And you'll move based on the lines here from this middle area to any of the areas uh, next to the large areas here. Then after you move, 
if you choose not to use a card, because you can use a moto taxi as opposed to movement, um, that will forego your one space movement, but might be allowing you to move two or maybe even three spaces, then you'll take an action. Uh, you can go ahead and A, search one of these large spaces here, and searching basically will allow you to flip one of these guys over, then you can go ahead and deal with them by fighting them in combat. Uh, if you defeat them, you'll gain the currency listed, and you'll be able to keep this card and discard it to fight the next card here. This is how you're going to gain currency throughout the game and also find the supremacies in hopes that if you defeat them, you'll win the game. You can, of course, as well, go ahead and collect uh, the supremacy for the win, which is included in that action. The next thing you can go do is a district action. These are the different districts in the game. For instance, the bazaar over here will let you buy cards from these three different stacks over here using your currency. The arms dealer will let you buy the tier one and tier weapon, tier two weapons. They'll go all, all these cards will go into your discard just like a normal deck builder. The clinic is where you're going to go whenever you get defeated in combat. The secret market is going to allow you to uh, buy any of the non-guaranteed supremacy, any of the extra supremacies that are going to be on the board. You can purchase those and put them into your hand. You can also buy a wiretap this location here and then you have the rag market where you're able to discard three cards from your deck your hand or your library and gain currency when you do so so any of these locations is usable which is nice uh, and of course there's also the last action which is attack if you're on the same space as another player and it is not the middle of the board you can attack you'll be able to use cards and dice, uh, and you're always gonna at least roll one die, and you're going to attempt to beat your opponent in combat. So based on whatever your symbol is, that's what you need in order to hit. So in this case, if I rolled one die and I rolled this, that would be a hit for gold tooth. If I wanted to, I wanted to play more cards, like for instance, I wanted to play a planned ambush, I could use two more die in addition, and if I happen to roll another one of those, that would be an additional hit. And how combat works is fairly simple. Whoever has the most hits is the winner. If you have things like armor, that can prevent certain types of the uh, certain types of die sides to not count towards dealing damage to you and vice versa when it comes to uh, your specific swords as well that will give you the ab ability to do in increase different types of hits um, and so that's how combat works and it works the same way for not only just the hit cards but other players if you defeat a player in combat you'll take their currency you can take the cards uh, that they're going to have in their hand these guys here and it'll give you knowledge and information to determine which one is the supremacy and so the ones that you get are not the ones obviously included in the supremacy so eventually when you mark down on your little sheet here if you mark them all down and Zwall is the last one left, then you will know Zwall is a supremacy with the necklace and you can try and find him in one of these different locations. And if you can do that first, you win the game. After you take your draw and your move and one of the three actions, then you'll pass turn and the next player will go. And it'll just simply go around in a circle up until somebody figures out who the supremacy is with the necklace, goes to the location, finds them in the hit deck and defeats them in combat. If you lose combat, um, if you if you lose combat, you're going to be going here to the clinic area. If you are uh, fight, if you if you uh, win combat to one of the supremacies, but they are not the ones that are the hidden one here, you will lose the game and be out. But otherwise, you simply will win the game, and that's basically the process of it: a minor deck builder with a little bit of movement and, of course, die rolling combat. And there's, of course, a ton of different types of cards in the deck that you'll be able to go and select through, whether it be a Devil's Gamble, allowing you to choose a damage type and roll one die per Devil's Gambit card you use. And if you roll the chosen type, you're not defeated in combat. Or maybe Moto Taxi, you can move additional spaces this turn. You'll be able to restock by shuffling your discard pile back into your draw pile, and so on and so forth. The decks here are obviously cost-based, and the farther along you go, the more likely the cards are going to be more powerful. So this one over here will let you move two um, and it'll count as your movement action. Uh, this one over here is going to let you a target player discards their hand and draws three cards which can be very powerful for not only you but maybe an opponent if you want to get rid of the cards in their hand. And of course realize that these cards do not count as actions except for the movement one. You can play as many of these cards as you want provided you're able to play them just like a normal deck builder like Clank. Anyway that's the basic idea of the game. Let's come up and discuss my review for the game Gutterfall Bounties. The game is basically part deck builder, part action management, part movement game in which you're going to be moving around the underworld attempting to gather specific items that will allow you to attack your opponents better. You'll also go to certain areas to determine if there's the supremacy in certain places. Uh, because you do not know at the beginning of the game, you're going to have a certain number of cards that will give you an idea of who is not. And you're going to have this little wonderful sheet here which tells you everything you need to know. And it's very, very useful. It functions kind of like the game Clue in that aspect. 
aspect where uh, one of the people is the person that you're seeking for, but all the rest are not. And you have to go around to your opponents as well as the game itself and locate that individual. But it doesn't end there. You also have to go to a specific location on the board and fight. There's going to be different targets. And inside the target deck here, you're going to find the specific bounty that you need. Whether it be, maybe it's a Jakarta exec. If, it, if this is the supremacy, you'll need to defeat this guy in combat. And if you do, you can gather the specific character and then win the game. However, if it is not, you're out of the game, which is a nice little twist. So you have to be pretty sure. And if you think somebody's pretty close, you can always have the objective or the opportunity to, to at least attempt to succeed, even if you're not 100%, because uh, if you maybe are missing out on some of the die rolls or luck, you can kind of push yourself ahead and take that chance. But it's at a great risk, which means there's a player elimination. And yes, you can eliminate yourself early in the game, but really if you do so, it's kind of on you. So the player elimination doesn't actually bother me as much in this game where it wouldn't a lot of other games, because you can choose to wait until you're 100% positive and never risk it. However, you're going to be more so risking it with the cards that you draw based on what you buy and of course the dice that you utilize. Uh, speaking of the dice that you utilize, each character is going to have a specific ability and of course a specific role of the die that they need to secure. You'll have these die in the game that you'll be utilizing with the different denotions on them. And when you roll them, uh, based on what weapons you're utilizing from your hand as well as your character, you can kind of attempt to defeat either players or of course the hit targets uh, as you go to find the supremacy. And yes, it's a little bit of a dice roll, a bit of a luck, but there's so much mitigation in this game that really it's your own fault if you fail to succeed, at least when fighting your uh, hit targets as you go from location to location. Uh, with other players, you have to kind of keep track of what they're playing, what they're gathering, when they're choosing to fight, as well as of course when you win too many battles, you'll start getting these little tokens here, and these tokens can be rather dangerous because it's going to make it easier for people to, to mess with you. So you have to kind of decide what fights you want to get in and how important it is you do so. To avoid fights, wiretapping is very, very important. Playing these guys, yes, you get rid of them, but it lets you look at one of the cards in your opponent's hands. And that's very, very needed because you'll have these guys here that are distributed amongst the players. Uh, and for the most part, uh, you're going to have an idea of what is not the supremacy, who doesn't have the amulet among these guys. And uh, you're going to have to do that throughout the game, whether it be attacking or using the wiretaps. And of course, you can buy and, and sell these that you have in your hand, switching them around into the game board if you want to kind of hide them. It reminds me a little bit of Chaosmo, so my friend Joey's game, which I really, really enjoy. And I like the aspect of kind of trying to decide or figure out where the... Uh, where the 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 chaos most I don't know relic is so to speak, and you'll be hiding them in planets. And this one here, the character is hiding in one of the locations, as well as in one of the players' hands. And you have to kind of do, well, the player is hiding in the board, and you have to denote based on what's not in the player's hands and what's not in your hand to determine uh, who it is. And so you'll be marking down these guys here. Once you've marked down five, you'll know who the bad guy is. You'll go to the location and find it and then beat it in combat and you will win. If you lose it in combat though, it might make other people realize who the who the supremacy is and who has the amulet and you'll have to defeat them that way. Uh, there's a bunch of different cards in the game that you can purchase as well. And they have tiers basically. There's a cost to each of the cards in the top right hand, left hand corner, as well as what they do. Most of the cards are going to involve you uh, in combat in some way or in movement in some way. Sometimes it'll let you clean out your deck. It's a deck building game, but you're going to be drawing three cards as opposed to the normal five, and you'll be utilizing those uh, mainly to gain access or information to the person with the amulet. Uh, every, there's just a little splash of all these different little mechanics in it, which is really nice because none of them are really more complex than the others. Uh, small little things about the game is I would definitely like to see a player reference for turns and actions that you can take in the game. I think that'll be very beneficial just so you have an idea of what you can do and what it costs. Um, as well as, of course, some of these things like, for instance, the cards tell you how much they cost, but the weapons and the armor do not. You have to look into the rule book and it'll explain it there. Uh, maybe some reference on those would be nice. Uh, as well. The fact that when you fight people, if you do too much combat, it makes it more likely for you to lose eventually is a nice twist as well. The fact that you're using currency, but you're only using donation, denotations, whatever your word is called, of a hundred, uh, making it very easy to denote how much you want to spend and for what. Uh, being able to buy and sell things is nice, and locations allowing you to get rid of cards and give you money is also a nice little twist that I haven't seen before. Going to different locations to buy certain things, and on one side of the board, you're going to be buying the basic 
cards, and on the other side of the board you'll be buying the armor and equipment. Equipment being uh, cards that will prevent you from losing to certain die rolls, and um, the, 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 the defense ones, and then the aggressive ones will allow you to roll additional die uh, faces that will do additional damage to your opponents. Basically whoever has the higher number of hits is the winner in it, uh, which is really simple, really straightforward how combat works, which is nice, but still a lot of options to mitigate and increase your potential to succeed when fighting the game. Uh, at, well, the characters themselves and, of course, the players. This game is a lot of fun. If you like games, kind of like Clank, with a little bit of like a Chaos Most twist, a little bit of a clue aspect to it, uh, this is one I would definitely suggest taking a look at. I hope they're going to... This is, of course, a full prototype. I'm hoping they actually include some miniatures since you only need six in the entire game. I think that would actually be kind of nice, maybe a deluxe version of the game. However, the standees do exactly what they need to do, and I don't have really a complaint about them. The characters and their specific abilities are nice as well. The artwork is excellent in the game. I enjoy all the different pieces of artwork. It's very dark. It's very grungy. It's very, like, underbelly. So these are basically like reptilian creatures that live under the earth, and they're dealing with kind of like a demonic presence that controls them all, and they all have to do this one specific thing for their overlord. If they don't, their souls will forever be entwined. It's a really good theme, and the theme works. Your objective is primarily to find the bounty and the necklace, and you feel like you're trying to search for that before anybody else, because otherwise there's a great cost to not being able to find it. Hopefully there's another necklace someday at some other point if you if you manage to fail. But anyway, overall, a fun game, a nice little twist on some mechanics I've seen before, but with unique um, tie-ins to all of them into one specific game. If you like Chaos Most, like clue-based games or clank-based game, something I would definitely suggest taking a look at, Gutterfall Bounties. I really enjoyed this copy down below. Link in the description is currently on Kickstarter. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Gutterfall Bounties currently on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and like this video, share this video, and hit that subscribe button, and of course the bell notification button. It greatly helps us out here, and we do greatly appreciate it. It'll help us build the channel more, promote more, promote more games that'll be on Kickstarter, so you guys can take a look at those. Uh, thank you guys so much. The website is unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We also have Unfiltered Games, where we're making games. We actually have one game in the works which is Moonshell. Uh, we'll have information on that within the week as to how the artwork has been put up and hopefully we'll be getting a manufacturer's prototypes to show you guys. Uh, you can also go ahead and join our Discord and of course Patreon. Thank you Patreons for supporting us. It's a buck a month and we do greatly appreciate it. Help us get out games to give away. Next week we will have a game being given away on the stream which is great. And of course you can also join us on the stream at 6.30pm PST every Wednesday. Uh, you can watch us play games literally just like this one here. In fact, this one might be a really good game to play on our stream, so do tune in for next week. We'll be playing some fun games and a bonus stream this Saturday. We'll be playing the games uh, Fug Life and Prosperity with the designers themselves here at the location. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to gathering the supremacy, the necklace, and securing my soul with you next time.